Please subscribe to this YouTube channel Mentor Talk Can Do Press Bell Button for Notifications. The recent imposition of contentious Hong Kong national security law by China concerning Hong Kong has created ripples all across the globe. Article 23 of the Hong Kong Basic Law, which came into force in 1997, stipulates that such a security law should be enacted by the Hong Kong Special Administrative Region. However, this law, which was enacted last month, was done by the Chinese Standing Committee of the National People's Congress instead of the Hong Kong Legislative Council. Let me acquaint you about the key draconian features of this law. But before that, in part one of this video, let me give you some brief background of the whole scenario and the trigger point of this law. On 19th December 1984, a joint declaration treaty was signed between the United Kingdom and China regarding handling of Hong Kong under the Chinese sovereignty. The declaration basically stipulated that the sovereign and administrative arrangement of Hong Kong after 1st July 1997, this being the date uh, when the lease of the Hong Kong in favor of the United Kingdom kingdom was set to expire. This declaration came into force when the, you know, when the instruments of ratification were exchanged and, and were finally registered by the, by, by both the Chinese and the British government at the United Nations on, uh, on, 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 on 12th June 1985. In the joint declaration, the Chinese government declared that it would resume the exercise of its sovereignty over Hong Kong, including, you know, the, the British territories of Hong Kong Island and Kowloon and, and the leased new, uh, uh, new, new territories. From 1st July 1997, and the British government declared that it would hand over Hong Kong to China on 1st July 1997. The Chinese government also declared its basic policies regarding Hong Kong in the document. In accordance with the one country, two systems principle agreed between the UK and China, the Hong Kong special administrative region shall not practice the socialist system of mainland China and the Hong Kong's existing capitalist system and way of life would be unchanged for 50 years until 2047. Yes, until 2047, the system in Hong Kong will remain unchanged. The transfer of sovereignty over Hong Kong by the handover of Hong Kong occurred on 1st July 1997, as was agreed uh, when, when the United Kingdom ended administration for the uh, colony of Hong Kong and returned you know, control of the territory to China. Hong Kong became a special administrative region and, and continues to maintain governing an economic system separate from those of mainland China, as we all know. This event ended 156 years of British colonial rule in Hong Kong. China apparently did not consider declaration as an obligatory document or instrument and branded it as a historical document that no longer had any practical significance. But the United Kingdom considers the declaration a legally valid treaty to which it was committed to upholding. Since the transfer of the sovereignty of Hong Kong from the United Kingdom to China in 1997, an increasing number of Hong Kong residents have become concerned about Beijing's encroachment on the territory's freedoms and, and, and failure of the Hong Kong government to deliver genuine democracy. Genuine democracy. This has led to a political movement that advocates Hong Kong to be established as an independent sovereign state. This movement 
gained a lot of momentum and thrust in the last five years, which has become a matter of unease for the political bosses sitting in China. To begin with, in February 2019, that is last year, on the directive of the bosses in China, Hong Kong proposed an extradition bill known as the Fugitive Offenders and Mutual Legal Assistance of Criminal Matters Legislation Amendment Bill 2019, whereby offenders based in Hong Kong could, could, uh, could be extradited to mainland China. Hong Kong's legal system, as we all know, is based on the rule of law. It has its own legal system in contrast to, to the law of uh, you know, People's Republic uh, of China. Under the principle of one country, two systems, which, which combines English common law and local legislation codified. The critics feared that the residents will be vulnerable to China's flawed legal system, which will, which will you know, curb their judicial independence. This, you know, led to uh, a more than a you know, million Hong Kongers, you know, taking to streets to protest against this extradition bill. The bill was eventually suspended and then withdrawn. Yes. Well, moving on to part two of the video. I will tell you about the draconian and intimidating provisions of this new Hong Kong national security law. Formally, you know, it is known as the law of the People's Republic of China on safeguarding national security in the Hong Kong special administrative region. As extradition bill had failed in 2019, which I explained in the previous part of the video, which you know, the, 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 that, that led to a rise in pro-democracy political movement in Hong Kong against China, which was never seen before. China was driven to introduce this provocative new law in Hong Kong. And experts feel that this law empowers China with unprecedented, unprecedented coercive judicial powers over Hong Kong. The legislation is seen as a systematic demolition of Hong Kong's legal system, which is, which is as of today, you know, based on the rule of law. Now, let me take you through the notorious enabling provisions of this law. Arbitrary, callous, random, and dangerously discretionary. That's my first point. The law broadly declares certain acts as criminal offenses. These include secession, subversion of state power, terrorist activities and collusion with foreign and external forces to endanger the national security. The offenders of these offenses could be imprisoned for life or for a long term imprisonment of 10 years and above. The foreign collusion shall include, you know, Hong Kong residents, hatred of the Hong Kong or, or, or Chinese government, electoral manipulation or sabotage and, and, and sanctions against Hong Kong or China. Quite frightening part is that damaging public transport and certain public facilities would be categorized as terrorism under the law. Anybody involved virtually or remotely in acts intended at dividing the country would be you know, those people would be branded as offenders of this law. Taking over extraterritorial jurisdiction, that's point two. Under the new law, China shall in its sole prerogative take over the entire jurisdiction over an offense committed in Hong Kong, right from arrest to, to, to the trial. As reported in, 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 in China's, in, you know, as is reported that in China's in penetrable judicial system, this, the, the, the rate of conviction is nearly 99%. In camera, privy judicial proceedings, point three, the law empowers the authorities concerned to conduct closed door judicial proceedings without the assistance of 
juries in Hong Kong. You know, if if it is considered that it is not fit to be brought in the public view, a particular case. The judges in cases of national security offenses will hold office only for one year and shall be appointed by the Hong Kong's chief executive without any consultation. And bail to offenders shall be granted in rare circumstances. Yes, that's the draconian part of the law. And that's not all. The contentious law authorizes China to constitute a national security agency. This national security agency for Hong Kong will, will, will have no jurisdiction from Hong Kong or control from Hong Kong. Yes, external agency manning Hong Kong. Yes. And this is not all. The new law gives sweeping powers to the police to gather evidence through various nefarious means, including tapping telephones, networks and espionage. Well, the law also targets freedom of speech and expression, freedom of the media in Hong Kong by making a provision for the management uh, and regulation of foreign NGOs and news organizations. So definitely the experts feel that we are going to see dark days ahead in Hong Kong as Hong Kong prepares to merge with the Chinese incomprehensible and opaque regime. Well, thank you and see you again with another set of mentor talk video on the issue relating to law and public policy. Bye for now. Please subscribe to this YouTube channel Mentor Talk and do press bell button for notifications.